What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome to episode 20, well, part, as we're calling them, 26 of our Pokemon D&D Veritas Region campaign, inspired by the YouTube channel Boarding Party and their Pokemon D&D adaptation. Please feel free to check them out. Their videos are amazing. When we last left off, things were far from happy-go-lucky. Rendman has seen many things in the short span of this campaign. From the destruction of his home to raiding a Team Reverence base, desperately trekking across the vast wilderness to try and make it to the professor's lab and finally arriving into Vestavilla and defeating a gym leader. But nothing could have quite prepared him for the carnage and devastation that played out when Team Reverence attacked the city of Vestavilla. The largest city in the southern part of the Veritas region. Such an attack was completely unexpected and they were thus unprepared to handle such a thing. Hardly anyone in the city slept that night. For many hours into sunset, explosions could still be heard from the far side of the city. The plumes of smoke took a long time to even slow down as Firefighters could not make it to the buildings that were being destroyed until Team Reverence was forced out of the area. It isn't until probably 4 or 5 in the morning that a haggard, ash-covered, very exhausted-looking Damon, the gym leader of Vestavilla, lands next to the Pokemon Center with his Sparrow Grove and walks up to Renmond whoop, and Verona. There goes my D4 again. Gotta remember to stop throwing my dice back and forth between my hands. They drop on the, far, on the floor far too often and I noticed in one of the last videos that this noise is very audible, which is good when I'm actually like rolling for stuff because you can very easily hear that. But uh, it's kind of distracting when I'm explaining what's going on. Walking up to Randmond and Verona, he sighs very audibly, and proclaims that Team Reverence have been forced out of the city. How bad was it? Well, they didn't manage to get past the initial police line, but it wasn't for lack of trying. Pulling up alongside them, is a very familiar looking face. Officer Jenny. Her sisters and her run every police station in every po in every city across the world. It's a large family. Officer Jenny walks up to them. I hear you two were there earlier on when the fighting first broke out. Damon said something about you taking on a couple of the grunts in an alley. Yeah, they, uh, they didn't seem to really care whether they hit our Pokemon or not. They were toppling buildings left and right, just missing attacks. It was like they didn't care if they hit us or destroyed the city around them. Did they mention what they were after? No, but 
I could tell they weren't following anyone specifically. They were just marching straight towards the center of the city. We, uh, we did manage to capture many of the grunts that were there. How many did you see? That were around the admins, maybe 35 or so. We couldn't tell how many had spread out to go down the side streets and stuff. Yeah, that sounds about right. It appears the admins, once they realized they were losing, didn't care too much about evacuating their forces. They had the Drudigans travel, or, uh, guard their escape. We didn't catch either of the admins. Couldn't identify them either. One of them's named Fear. His name is Fear? That's what they call him. You heard them say this? Yeah. And I saw him on the road here. Route 403. When I was heading to Morinder. I saw him on the route. He had grunts stationed along the road. They must have been planning this attack for some time. They hit a section of the wall exactly where it would bring it down. This is a serious matter. I'm going to have to do a conference call with the rest of the gym leaders in the region. Renmond, would you and Verona mind coming with me? I believe you can help explain some of what's been going on. Officer Jenny, Damon, Renmond, and Verona head into the gym, up the flight of stairs, and into a corridor that Renmond has never seen before. It says in big letters on a sign at the top of the staircase, Authorized Personnel Only. The doors all have locks on them and are labeled such as you know, rooms that contain files and paperwork, rooms for expenses, some storage of more uh, of rarer items that the gym would have in order to keep itself functioning. At the end of the hallway is a door that has no markings, just a knob. What are you guys doing? I don't know what they're knocking over, but I don't see anything. That was obviously something plastic. Anyways. They head up to this nondescript door, and it's just got a doorknob with a key slot in it. Damon takes out a key and unlocks the door. Inside the door is what looks like a conference room. There's a big table, but all the chairs are facing towards one wall, and on that wall is a large screen. They all take seats at the table, and Damon begins typing on a computer. He's on there for a while. As the screen turns on, they can see that it's sectioned off into a bunch of webcams, for lack of a better word, showing faces of individuals who are clearly in other cities across the region. In the middle is a space for photographs and documents to be displayed. Gym leaders of the Veritas region, Vestavilla has just been attacked by Team Reverence. It's, uh, 
it's going to take a while to find out the exact numbers, but it's looking like the civilian death toll is somewhere around 100. Around 15 Team Reverence Grunts were killed in the fighting. About 40 were captured. Both of the admins involved in the incident escaped. Several buildings were destroyed, and the outer wall of the city was breached. It was a very clearly planned attack, and we have yet to determine what exactly they were lurk looking for. However, it appears that whatever it was, they never got it. One of the men in one of the other windows around the edge of the screen leans towards the camera says, Gormberg was also attacked several days ago. They didn't manage to breach the walls, but there was a great number of them. At this point, a woman speaks up, and she says, Is it possible that this is somehow linked to the disappearance of Team Rocket in the Veritas region? A Pokemon leans into one of the screens. It appears to be an Alakazam whose voice echoes ethereally through the speakers in the room. That would seem likely. Team Rocket has always had a strong presence across all of the regions, and it is not uncommon for them to perform such attacks on smaller settlements, but they never like to leave bodies behind, and there's never been anything on this scale before. I think it's safe to say that Team Reverence is gearing up for something big. On that note, I believe my friend here may have some information that we do not as of yet have. Master of the Psychic Type, Jim, I trust you will confer our findings to the Elite Four. Yes, of course. Renmond, why don't you tell them why you came to my gym? Renmond stands up and walks over in front of the screen. A couple months ago, my hometown, Coastborn, the southernmost city in the Veritas region, was attacked by Team Reverence. They killed everyone in the city and stole my family's Pokemon. They fled to a base on Southstrom Isle where they appeared to be doing some sort of experiment regarding the evolution of Eevees. What kind of experiments are we talking about? Says the woman that uh, Renbin does up not as of yet know. These are just screens showing the people's faces. There's not like names or anything under them. And he hasn't met these gym leaders yet. Renmond throws out his Pokeball, and his Umbreon comes out. What type of Pokemon is that? Dusk looks at the camera, and in English says, I was an Umbreon. You can speak. Yes. Before Team Reverence captured me, I was an ordinary Umbreon. Rendman's father evolved me early so that I could learn the maximum amount of dark type moves. When Team Reverence captured me, they put me in some kind of machine. 
an older man with graying hair, almost white, leans forward in his camera and says, uh, what did the machine look like? Renman responds, it had rubber tubing. There were three large tanks containing some sort of for lack of a better word, elixir. And there was a lot of power going into the machine. When they turned it on, the chamber filled with light. Apparently, from what we've been able to figure out by talking to various people, such as Professor Ginkgo, the elixir appears to have contained some amount and variety of powderized evolutionary stones. Beyond that, I have no idea. Something in the laboratory said something about getting ahead of Team Rocket, but apparently they've already done that. And... Once the machine had been activated, it did this to your Umbreon? Dusk responds, yes. When I went into the machine, I was an ordinary Umbreon. When I came out, I had forgotten most of the attacks that I knew. And I have apparently become a ghost fire type. You're saying they have a technology that is capable of changing a Pokemon's typing. The way Professor Genko expli explained, explained it, the way the professor explained it was, I don't know why Renbin is suddenly Scottish, but he is now. <laughs> uh, the way Professor Genko explained it to us was that they likely took Umbreon because Eevee is already one of the most adaptable Pokemon. So we don't know if it would work on something that wasn't an Eevee or an Evolution. And the machine also no longer exists. What is that supposed to mean? When I freed my Umbreon from the machine, I pushed one of the scientists into the control panel he became impaled upon one of the levers of the machine, and in a struggle to get off, he did something that overloaded the machine. After I left the island, it exploded. So, the base on Seltram Island doesn't exist anymore? Not as far as I'm aware. I'm guessing most of the grunts and scientists that worked there were killed in the explosion. Heck, I was miles away at the time, and by the time it exploded, and I didn't escape unscathed. What does that mean? Renman takes off his, uh, for lack of a better word, bandanas, revealing the extent of the burn scarring on his face. I was rescued by a group of, uh, Gardevoirs. They spent a week trying to heal me, but there was only so much they could do. I was struck by a piece of molten metal from the facility. The explosion was strong enough to send debris miles away, and it's unlikely that any of the people at the facility survived, although we can't rule out that they may have data backed up on servers that we cannot reach. The Alakazam speaks up. I have friends that can look into that. What is the extent of the damage to the city? Well, other than the current estimated death toll, approximately 17 buildings were either destroyed or compromised to an extent that they can't be repaired. An entire section of the outer wall was destroyed when they entered the city, and many of the surrounding buildings have minor damage due to stray attacks. As Renman said, 
They didn't seem to really care what they hit. The roads also suffered significant damage, and we have power loss to approximately one-eighth of the city, mostly in the section that was attacked. We're looking at setting up temporary housing for the people that were injured in several of the inns on the opposite side of the city. How did Gormberg fare? Well, they put up a hell of a fight. Poked a few holes in the outer wall, but none of them got through. Thankfully, a couple of people entering the city spotted them when they were on their way to breach the wall, and I was able to make it there in time to stop them. We fought them off. It appeared that two admins were also present at the attack on Gormberg. That suggests a network of Team Reverence spanning the countryside comparable to the presence of Team Rocket several years ago. Yes. I believe Team Reverence to be in multiple parts of the country. As we've previously stated, it's virtually impossible for them to gain access to any of the major cities without attacks of such force, but we can't guarantee the safety of the smaller settlements. Coastborn likely won't be the last one hit. We should also probably dispatch uh, flying types to Restvale and Ornstrad in an attempt to determine if they've set up bases on any of the uninhabited islands. As for Elation and the other islands, many of them have habitats that are unfit to build in. We'll have to hope that will be enough to dissuade them from setting up similar bases across the country. We don't have the numbers to survey every unexplored patch of wilderness for Team Reverence bases. We also cannot rule out the possibility that they may have bases under some of the cities in the sewer systems. We can ask some of the Grimer and Muck to search the tunnels, but given the extent of the networks beneath many of the cities, we may be unable to find them. You say this, Renvind, why, that is, why did you come specifically to Vestaville? To become strong enough to take down Team Reverence. That is no easy feat. If you had said that you were aiming to become champion, that would be no less of a challenge. From what we've seen from this, Team Reverence may be in all parts of the country. Well, I'm going to have to be in all parts of the country if I want to take out all the gyms myself. Besides, I'm not going to let them get away with what they did to Coastborn. Me and Dusk have our own score to settle with Team Reverence. What of the Pokemon that Team Reverence used in the attack? They were powerful, at least comparable to early stage gym Pokemon. That was Dredigan. They were stronger than any Pokemon I've ever seen a criminal organization wield. I find it hard to believe that those Dredigan were helping them willingly. If they had been captured, it, they might have not had a choice. I think I can help you there, says Redmond. I encountered a pair of wild dread again on my way here in the wilderness. It's possible 
that Team Reverence simply stumbled across them as I did, and through sheer numbers managed to capture them. That would explain how they had such powerful Pokemon with them. They were using multiple types. Yes. Seemed to be mostly fire and water types. The dragons were obviously something we've never seen from them before. And as dragon types are usually too proud to work with something like that. Could you tell if the other Pokemon were willing? Well, one of them had a Barrascuta. It seemed pretty eager to fight. It's possible that that specific grunt may have raised it himself. However, there are a couple that may have just been following orders. Do you have any of these Pokemon? Well, we've confiscated the Pokeballs of any of the Team Reverence Grunts we captured. Could you have one of them brought here for questioning? Um, I have a Pokeball from one of the Grunts. Why do you have a Grunt's Pokeball? After we defeated the Grunts who were attacking us that brought down those two buildings, he went after us with a baseball bat. I figured everything was crumbling and burning around him, so I scooped up the Pokeball and ran for it. What kind of Pokemon is it? What's this thing's name again? Come on, I have it here somewhere. We are doing so well? Here it is. Uh, it was a Drizzile. It didn't seem very confident in its moves. It's possible they might have stolen it. Can we speak with it? I mean, it's currently unconscious. We did just beat them in a battle. Was it in critical condition? No, we just knocked it out. I believe I can help with that, says Damon. Pulls out a strange looking medical device. This is a revive. It's a way of uh, restoring a Pokemon to consciousness when it's been defeated in battle. Would you mind sending out the Drizzile? Sends it out. It's bruised and covered in scuff marks, but it's very much stable. It's breathing heavily on the floor. Gym leader walks up to it and uses the device, and it slowly begins to stir to consciousness. Drizzile, you were helping Team Reverence attack our city. Was it by choice? He just stares at him for a second. Renmond, would you mind, uh, Drizzile? You can speak to us. Yes, I can. And she, he says, looking at the Umbreon, can speak to you. They want that Umbreon badly. I know, but that's not what they came for, was it? No. And I did not help them willingly. They found my trainer on the way here, killed him, and took me. I had no choice but to obey them. Do you know what they were searching for? Something old. They said something that had been buried for almost a century. Do you know of any such devices that would be buried in this city for over a hundred years? Is that what he says they were after? Yeah. Um, not that I can think of. I mean, Vestaville is a pretty old city as far as Vest Veritas is concerned, but as to what they might have been looking for, 
We'll have to look into that further. Unless we have other pertinent information to discuss. Gormberg is still uh, damaged at the outer wall. I would like to attend to the matters. By all means. Psychic Master, will you convey our findings to the Elite Four? Yes. Screen turns off. Renmond, Verona, why don't you go sleep things off at the Pokemon Center? Might as well take Drizzile with you. You'll still need healing. I'm afraid there's not much we can do if his trainer's dead. Were you the only Pokemon your trainer had? Yes, he was coming here to face his first gym battle. I'm sorry. And he returns the Drizzile to its Pokeball. We have a lot to deal with. We'll talk with you later. As everyone leaves the gym, Renmond and Verona head back to the Pokemon Center. They put the Drizzile, they give the Drizzile and their Pokemon to Nurse Joy to heal them up. And uh, they lay down for the most restless night of sleep they've had since Renmond was on the road here. Neither of them manages to get much sleep. And that's where we're going to leave it. And I will see you in the next video.